Guys, what's happening? Welcome back to FTD Speaks. This is Leroy Kenton, if you don't already know. And this topic is something that, even if you're not Muslim, you know. Pork, pig, anything to do with the pig is haram, according to Islam. And the big question, though, that I want to know is why? Is it just because, oh, it's not healthy? Like, what other reasons are there, if there are any other reasons? So I found this video and I haven't watched it yet. So we're going to be watching it for the first time together, where it's going to be describing why pork is haram according to the religion of Islam. So let's take a look at that. And then I'm going to share all my thoughts and comments after. Uh, I'm a Christian. She's a Christian. Like, uh, since a long time, I've been having conflicts with myself. The questions that I would like to ask today are mostly like maybe assumptions or like things where I've been influenced from people. Like my first question, it's about uh, pig. Uh, basically, I would like to know what exactly is the meaning of haram. Like, uh, is uh, for a religion like Islam, it won't accuse anyone of being wrong. Yeah, uh, it it wouldn't say something to be so wrong. Why is uh, big haram mm -hmm. because uh, I had attended a Christian convention and over there it was told like there was this priest who was saying that why is pork haram in Islam uh, he gave an example saying that uh, uh, like the same rubbish like uh, it was used as manure for the plants uh, the plants like supposing it was a mango, mango tree the mango grew the roots had absorbed the same nutrients the same rubbish it uh, grew into mango and we consume it. So how is it different from consuming it in pork and uh, the mango? Sister asked a question that what is the meaning of haram and why is pork haram in Islam? And she gave the example of the priest, a Christian priest who said that manure, which is dirt and filth, is used by the tree. The tree grows and then mango comes and we eat mango trying to say that even if you eat the filth of the pork, it may be good for someone else, may not be good for others. That's what he means to say. So in Islam, it's haram, but Christianity, it's allowed. Hmm. Sister, first I'll tell you the meaning of haram means prohibited, Pro means prohibited. forbidden. Haram in Islam means prohibited, it means forbidden. I will answer your question of the priest first, and then I'll come to the real reason why pork is haram. The priest gave the example that manure is supposed to be dirt and filth is healthy for the tree and when the tree grows it gives mango and we eat the mango trying to say that maybe it's haram for Muslims but good for Christians if you compare the manure which is filth for the human beings it may be good for the plants because plants and human beings are two different beings they aren't the same they are different but in Islam and Christianity the human beings are the same you may follow different religions, but what is good for one human being as a general thing is good for the other human being unless he has certain problems. For example, if he has diabetes, then sugar may not be good for him. But normally sugar is good. It gives you energy. Unless he has some problem, then it may not be good for him. But as far as general human beings are concerned, the rule for all the human beings, what is good and bad is the same. So you can't give the example of manure is good for some and not good for other. What we have to see, we have to go to the guide. What does the guide tell us? And we'll try and analyze what does the guide tell us. The guide in Christianity, it is the Bible. The guide in Islam is the Quran. When we read the Quran, there are no less than four different places where the Quran says pork is prohibited. Allah says in the Quran, in Surah Baqarah chapter 2 verse 173, in Surah Maida chapter number 5 verse number 3, in Surah Anam chapter number 6 verse number 145, and in Surah Nahal chapter number 16 verse number 115, alaykumul maitu tu waddamu wala mun kinzir, wa ma uhilla li gair illa bi, forbidden for you for food, ah, dead meat, blood, the flesh of swine, and any food on which any name besides Allah's name is taken. Mm -hmm. So your Quran says in no less than four different places that eating the flesh of pig, pork is prohibited. Similarly, if you read the Bible, Bible in no less than three different places says pork is prohibited. Bible says in the book of Leviticus, chapter number 11, chapter number 11, verse number 7 and 8, that thou shalt not eat the flesh of swine, nor touch its carcass. It's unclean for you. Mm -hmm. 
A similar message is given in the book of Deuteronomy, chapter number 14, verse number 8. Though the swine has cloven foot and it chews not the cud, it is unclean for you. Similarly, it's mentioned in the book of Isaiah, chapter number 65, verse number 2 to 5, that you should not have the flesh of swine. So Bible says in no less than three different places that you should not have the flesh of swine. And Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, said in the Gospel of Matthew, chapter number 5, verse number 17 and 20, that think not that I have come to destroy the law of the prophets. I have come not to destroy but to fulfill. For anyone who breaks one of the least commandments shall be called least in the kingdom of heaven. That means if you break one law, one jot or tittle from the Old Testament, you shall not enter Jannah. So as a Christian, if you believe in the Bible, then eating pork is prohibited for you, is forbidden for you, is haram for you. If you are a Muslim, if you believe in the Quran, it is prohibited. If you do not believe in the Bible or do not believe in the Quran, let's analyze what does today's reason and logic and science say about pork. Today's science tells us that if you have the flesh of swine, there are chances that you may have no less than 70 different diseases. You can have pinworm, you can have roundworm. The most dangerous amongst all the diseases, it is tapeworm. It's called Astenia solium. And it harbors in the intestine and is very long. Even if you cook the food very well, the eggs, the ova of Tinea solium does not die. And from the intestine, through, via the bloodstream, it can go to almost all the organs of your body. It can enter the eye and cause blindness. It can enter the heart and cause heart attack. It can enter the brain and cause brain damage. And by the time you realize you are suffering from the disease, it's an irreversible damage done. Furthermore, today science tells us that when you eat pork, it is more of fat building material rather than muscle building material. That's the reason most of the people who are regular pig eaters, they have got tires, they have got flaps. Mm. Today science tells us that by eating pork, there are high chances of having atherosclerosis. Atherosclerosis. Today science tells us that if you eat pig regularly, you may have hypertension. That's the reason more than 50% of the Americans today, they're suffering from hypertension because most of them are pig eaters. Today, science tells us that one of the most filthiest animals on the face of the earth is the pig. Wherever you find dirt and filth, you'll find the pig there. Today, science also tells us that pig is one of the most shameless animals on the face of the earth. Pig today is one of the most shameless animals on the face of the earth it enjoys seeing its spouse, seeing its mate have sex with his friend. In the Western countries, we have dance parties. After dance parties, we are swapping of wives. You sleep with my wife, I sleep with your wife. Hmm. Do you think it's modest? And there is a scientific thing that you eat pig and you behave like pig. <laughs> Shoot, staying. Hope this answers your question, sister. Okay. So another video from Dr. Zakir Nayak that really shed a lot of light on a topic. And in this case, we were looking at why is pork haram according to Islam and what does science have to say about it being haram nowadays? Now, this woman who is a Christian, she's being told by a priest that, well, you know, if you put you if you use manure to grow uh, some mangoes from a mango tree and you eat it, what's the difference between eating that and um, eating pork? Shouldn't it be also forbidden in Islam to eat mango that is grown from manure? And Dr. Nairk, he brought up an important point for that that says you can't compare animals to humans. It's two different species or two different life forms, you got to compare humans to humans. And then he showed some passages in the Bible, in the Old Testament specifically, that talks about pork being forbidden, and also in the Quran, in several different places, that it talks about pork being forbidden as well. So in the Bible, we see the similarities there that pork is forbidden uh, in, in the Old Testament anyways, and in the Quran. Now, every time a topic like this comes up, I always know that some people can get very, very, very defensive on it or become 
experts in this or pretend like they're experts anyways when it comes to eating food now eating food of course is a personal choice you can eat anything that you want you're given free will to choose right and in islam the term haram is forbidden and it's pretty much outlining what humans should do and what humans should avoid so if it's haram it's just forbidden don't use it at all there is however the aspect of free will and choice to choose to eat it so there's people muslims that eat pork and it's not like they're bad people or people in general that eat pork it's not like they're bad gross monsters and they deserve to be burnt because they eat pig some people just say like yeah i understand all the health risks and everything and i'm gonna go and eat it but scientifically the reason why dr zakir Naik says that pork is haram is because of all the negative impacts that it does have on a person so even if you cook the the meat they'll still have eggs in there that aren't destroyed and you can develop tapeworms and these things they can go and infect different parts of your body to the point where sometimes it can lead to things like blindness so yeah there's a lot of health impacts when it comes to eating pork i think people know that even those who aren't fully educated in diet and science to some degree know that certain foods like pork are not necessarily as healthy as other foods but it is a fair question and going back to my point like i think a lot of people get really hung up on this and get really emotional and heated about this is because diet is something that's very very really close to people's heart and if somebody tells you don't eat something and they're making you feel like a bad person for eating that of course there's going to be a pushback so it's this whole debate that continues to happen where people are trying to police other people's diets and everything. But either way, guys, if you are Muslim, according to the Quran, it is haram. If you are a Christian, according to the Old Testament of the Bible, it is haram. Even parts of the New Testament, uh, there are places where, um, I think it was Peter. Peter, the disciple Peter, he had a vision. This is the New Testament. And he saw all different types of animals and beasts and everything and he was like well since i was born i didn't eat anything unclean and then god says what i cleansed you shouldn't call it unclean and there's also passages in the new testament where the apostle paul says that the kingdom of god isn't food or drink it it, it you don't inherit god's kingdom based on what you eat so i could see how this woman can be really 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 um so i can see how this woman could have that question and being a christian and trying to find out about islam's perspective as well all in all what i can say is i guess to wrap up everything because i don't want to ramble too much diet is a personal choice and if you are convinced that it is haram to eat pork continue don't eat it if you're not convinced go ahead eat it if you choose i can't judge you that's between you and god all right guys so really hope you guys enjoyed this video i know there's a lot to say on this topic but perhaps we'll visit this topic again in another video dr zakir nagy laid out some pretty important points as well and hopefully my view allowed you to see some new perspectives as well leave your thoughts and comments down below i want to hear what you guys have to say don't forget to leave a like on this video and if this is your first time here to the channel hit that subscribe button and ring the bell that way you'll be notified every time i post a new video and you can continue joining me on my journey as i continue to explore the different religions and cultures of the world. That's it for me, guys. FTD fam, I am out of here. See you guys next time. Later.